kinematics. Kinematics is actually a physics term that simply means motion. It's a fancy word and it means motion. Before we can talk about the motion of an object, we first have to define a few things. Number one, what's the origin? Where are we starting from? Where are we taking all of our measurements from? Who or where is the position relative to? Next, we need to define a direction. Oftentimes, we're going to say left is going to be negative and right is going to be positive. Now, this is referred to as a convention. There's nothing in nature that says that left has to be negative and right has to be positive. But as scientists, we agree that we're going to make the left a negative and the right positive so that in our equations, when we get negatives and positives, we all agree that we know what direction that is. So what position is this dot? We can see that it's at positive 9 meters. Positive means to the right, so it can also be said that it, it is at 9 meters to the right. This next dot is located at negative 6 meters. And since we know negative means left, we can also say it's, neg it's 6 meters to the left. These two terms, displacement and distance, are oftentimes used interchangeably. However, they are quite different. Displacement is referred to as a vector, and a distance is a scalar. Now, we're not going to get into depth into that. We'll get into that in the next unit. But suffice it to say that displacement is found by change in position, which does include the direction. It includes left or right. Distance, however, is just how far something travels. If it travels to the left and then travels to the right, it's both of those included together. To find displacement, we take the final position and subtract the initial position. Now here we see this delta symbol. This triangle is actually a Greek letter that means change in. It's a Greek letter delta and it means change in. Or another, uh, in other terms, it means final minus initial. Final minus initial what? Well, f this X right here stands for position. So it's final minus initial position. We see that right here in this part of the equation. Final position minus the initial position. So let's start with negative 6 meters and then go to positive 9 meters and then come back to positive 4 meters. Now if we look at the displacement, we look at the final position and the initial position. We disregard what happens in between. So the fact that we went to 9 meters in between means absolutely nothing as far as displacement is concerned. But we start at negative 6 and end at positive, so, at positive 4. So the final minus initial is going to be positive 4 meters minus a negative 6 meters. And that will give us a total of positive 10 meters. Now this positive means to the right. So we end 10 meters to the right from where we started. And you can see that on here. If we start at negative 6, we go 10 places to get to positive 4. So we moved 10 meters to the right from where we started. To figure out distance, however, we have to figure up each part that we move. The fact that we went to 9 meters actually does matter when we talk about distance because you had to go a further distance to get back to where you were. So we started at negative 6 and went to positive 9. That's a total of 15 meters. And then we went from positive 9 to positive 4. That's a total of 5 meters. So we have 15 meters to get to positive 9 and then 5 meters to get back to positive 4. So that's a total distance traveled of 20 meters. That's quite different than what we have for displacement. Displacement has 10 meters positive, which means to the right. Distance traveled, though, is going to be 20 meters, and it does not have a direction. And you can see that with the number line. We move to the right and then move to the left. That makes a difference as far as displacement is concerned, but not as far as distance. This right here is a family circus cartoon. Uh, this is usually published in the Sunday newspaper. And you can see this little guy right here, his name is Billy, and he started right here on the steps. And you can see he traveled all the way around through the trash can and through the teepee and around over the car, across the street, through the woods, back over through the neighbor's yard, jumping through the tree, coming over, and ended up over here. Now what's different? What two things are different here? Well, his displacement 
is different than the distance that he traveled. If you look at his final position and his initial position, you can see that it's quite short, very, very small. However, the distance that he traveled is really, really long. So that's the difference between distance and displacement. His displacement is very small, while his distance is very long. Now there are other terms, like final position. Sometimes that is confused with these other two things, where we say distance traveled, displacement. Final position, distance traveled, and displacement are going to be the three terms that we're going to look at. So if we start at the origin, and we move without turning around, then all three of these measurements are going to be exactly equal to each other. Distance, displacement, and final position are all going to be the same. Now if we start at the origin, but we do turn around in the process, then the distance traveled is not going to be the same as the displacement because you had to travel past um, your point that you're going to stop at and then come back so you're going to have a smaller displacement than you would have distance traveled. However, your final position is going to be the same as your displacement because displacement is final position minus the initial position. And if the initial position is zero, then the final position will be equal to the displacement. Let's suppose you don't start at the origin, but you do not turn around also. So you move without turning around. Then that means the distance that you traveled and your displacement are going to be equal to each other. But your final position is not because the final position is going to be subtracted, subtracting some value that's not at the origin, so it's going to be different than your displacement. Now if you don't start at the origin and you do turn around the process of you moving, then none of the three terms are going to be the same. So here's a process we want to go through in the general steps in solving for a physics problem. Uh, so first thing we need to do is we need to figure out the given. Uh, the givens, uh, that's basically what's given to us in the problem. So what do we know? What information is given so that we can use that in order to solve the problem? Uh, the next step is to figure out what the unknown is. Uh, a lot of times this may be the easiest step simply because it tells us uh, the last question or last part of the uh, problem just says that what is the velocity? What is the time? So usually that is easier to figure out, but sometimes it might be a little bit uh, harder to figure out because it's, it says how far does it go? Now how far is a displacement? So you would have to kind of interpret what the what is given and what's unknown. All right, the uh, third step is going to be the equation. So based on what is given, what information we have, and based on what is unknown, we're going to choose an equation that has uh, the givens that we can plug in, and then the unknown being the only thing that is unknown within that equation so that we can isolate that variable and then solve for our uh, unknown. All right, so then the next step is once you pick that uh, equation, you can plug in your givens, that's substitute, plug in what you have. And then the last step is to solve for what you uh, what is your unknown. So essentially step four goes along with step one. After you choose the equation, you take your givens and you plug it in. And then step two and five are kind of together as well. Uh, you solve it by isolating your unknown. All right, so this is referred to as the guess method for this reason, that uh, G-U-E-S-S. -S, that way it's a little bit of an acronym to kind of help us solve uh, for some of these physics problems, these word problems that we have. We have our givens, our unknowns, the equation, substitute and solve. So that way, whenever you come up to a problem, you have no idea what to do and you're like, well, I'm just going to guess. Well, that is that kind of helps you determine uh, if you remember that method that kind of gives you a, a, a template by which you're going to be able to solve for that problem.